look at this morning's paper. The uh, PR consultant, former News of the World editor, Phil Hall, is here with us. Good morning. Uh, Phil, you're going to tell us what you found inside today. Let's go straight to the inside One of my favourite books, fact. actually. It well, mentions it, it, The Guardian. Amazing success story, isn't she? Julia Donaldson, she has uh, eight of the top ten selling children's books right now. Ten million pounds a year turnover in her her books. And what she's saying is Gruffalo, which I think anybody who's got young children like knows a story like <laughs> me. I think I've got it in about three times. I think I've, I've bought it. Yeah. Um, she's saying she won't allow it to go onto, onto computers so that you can uh, read it through, through the e-books. And I think that's quite nice. You know, there's something about books that are cosy and warm. And I've got a little one-year-old and she goes to the box and pulls the, pulls the book out. Now, I wouldn't see her doing that with an iPad or an iPod or whatever device it is they read these books on. And I think she's making a bit of a stand here for traditional values and that reading is a cosy before bed activity. It's not just about learning to read. And I'm sure, I mean, I imagine, of course, the drawings could have as well be put on the computer, but part of her books, the charm of them, are the drawings, aren't they? They very much are so. And I, I guess, you know, the, the, the secret with ebook, of course, is you can do other things. It can be more interactive. You can have moving film and that sort of thing. So there are options, I think, as children get older. But I think for the very young, it's nice. I think a lot of parents will uh, relate to that. Interestingly, she didn't object to it being turned into a TV programme, did she? <laughs> well, I, I still think it's a different experience, isn't yeah. it? You know, reading a book is a bonding a moment, I think, between parent and child. This is a worrying story you on the daily. You wouldn't about this, would you? <laughs> Why women feel over the hill at 29? Well, it's, it, I suppose it's stating the obvious, like so many of these surveys <gasps> are in the end. In the, at the end is of the day, I think men's heroes tend to have cauliflower ears and squash noses or hit a golf ball, you know, 300 yards at the age of 50. Whereas they're saying that w women's uh, heroes in today's society are in women's magazines. They look younger, fresher all the time. And it, may, it makes women sort of... Uh, cautious and nervous and uncomfortable with the, with the growing process. I don't uh, agree I with think, this, of course. I think 29 <laughs> is really young to feel over the hill. And, and just to make it even more depressing, this study has been done by a funeral service oh, Well, company. actually, I was going to point that out. <laughs> nice. Not 29, yeah. You're not ready for the funeral service yet, I don't think. <laughs> Um, what's this from the well, mail? Well, Francis, oh, uh, uh, Maud was just talking about the uh, manufacturing industry in this country, and I just think this is a lovely, lovely story. An inventor has created a radio that gets its energy from the shower. I mean, what ingenuity. You stick the radio in the shower, the shower water falls on the radio, charges the, the battery, and there you are, you're listening to the radio effectively for free. What a brilliant <laughs> idea. <laughs> it's fantastic, isn't it? But real ingenuity, and it's done by a, a company called uh, Tango Group in Gloucestershire. On the face of it, it seems wrong, doesn't How it? Could you, you do know, that? Water powering something but like that. But the reality radio. is, if, if, a, if a shower can power a radio, think of the possibility of water power and what it can do in the future. Yes, absolutely. We've got the Telegraph here as well saying that retro dishes are back. <laughs> it's back to prawn cocktails and. Uh... It's so true, I'd noticed this without re really realising what was behind it. I mean, we all thought we were so sophisticated when we were eating chicken Kiev and Dakar La Ronge all those years ago. Well, they're coming back in big numbers now. And uh, Marks and Spencer Tesco is 25, 20% up the old dishes. So Dakar La Ronge, as I said, chicken Kiev, I think it's steak Diane and beef stroganoff, all these golden oils. And you, you don't really realise, do you, that actually food has a cycle and a trend and people get very, you know, very into a particular dish and then they move it on, I suppose, marketing to bring something new to the table. But it's... I and I we're not allowed to talk about it anymore, but look, I just want to show everybody that photo. This is my look. picture for the spring. Isn't that fantastic? The smallest stallion in the world and uh, a <laughs> huge, huge tourist attraction, I think, in, in America where he or she lives. But Brilliant. what a beautiful picture for the spring. Thank you very much. Einstein, Stanley would be here. <laughs> Perfect name. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Phil. It's 29 minutes past.